I mean, we're all, like you say, man, it's more of a comedy show behind the scenes than it is. Whether it's vocals or maybe like a drum part and then just right. fucking hooks you in there. Right. You know, well, those hooks inspire me, man. Yeah. That's what inspires me is those hooks, man. I got to hear them hooks, man, to be inspired to write inspired lyrics, you know. I, I had my own agenda, man, ever since I was a little kid. I knew what I wanted to be. Use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code HEAVY at checkout and get 15% off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. Glenn Benton, it is an honor for you to be here, man. Cool. I am I am pumped. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I never seen D-Side, so tonight I'm pretty fucking stoked. Cool. And, uh, and congratulations that uh, this is the 30 year anniversary for for your record Legion. Right, Ama- amazing, dude. Yeah, it's been a long time, so it was kind of a unique experience being able to revisit that after 30 years. Yeah, how how's that been for for you and and the guys, Espe- especially you and Steve? Well, I mean, there was some of the songs that we used to play um, back in the early 90s when we wrote that record and. We would play a few of those songs, but we kind of like abandoned it because everybody uh, back then were still stuck on the first record. So when Legion came out, it was a, a, a lot of the uh, a lot of criticism, and really? when we would try to play the songs live, it wasn't really that one of those records that I thought where the crowd reaction was where it should have been. But so we kind of buried it, you know, and uh, kind of abandoned it. We played a couple songs off of it over the years, like Try for Fiction and uh, Behead the or. Uh, Behead the Prophet, or not Behead the Prophet, but, uh, oh, Jesus. But anyways. So when that record first came out, there was a, so people didn't catch on to it, really? Yeah, it was kind of like a delayed reaction. And then like four or five years later, everybody was raving about how great that record was. And I was like, really? We, we were, at that time, we were like, didn't know what to think if it was, uh, like, and then that turned out to be the, the same thing with a lot of records. It's like everybody kind of hates it in the beginning and then it grows on them and then so you gotta just have thick skin man that's oh yeah <laughs> how we've, we've dealt with a lot of it well, that that's really bizarre because especially with this genre of music like you guys are one of the top selling definite bands of all time and that record in particular is what i'm, I'm talking about so it's, it's kind of weird hearing that oh wait like the record that's so much listened to and actually purchased that there was like a delayed reaction to it. It's I think crazy. that's with any first, you know, when a band has their first record that, you know, the expectations are really set high, you know, for the second one. And I just think it, it shot above everybody's head. I think they were expecting something different. And, but um, like I say it grew on people, man, you know, so. It did. And especially with, I mean, I was, I was talking with, uh, with Zach, but to me personally, like, it, I think it's also because D-Side was, it was definitely you, you were the most extreme out of that pact, and in in, in, in a, to me in a, in an already extreme area and uh, and being from being in Tampa, like these, I was really like really extreme. Well, I, I see, I, we were all most of, for most of I, I was brought to Florida when I was a small child, and that so I you know kind of. A lot of the guys in Florida were brought there by their parents, you know, relocated to Florida and that. And at that mm-hmm. time, man, when I was, you know, getting to be a later teenager and stuff like that and seeing all the bands playing, for me, it was like Sabotage, you know, back then, you know, they were a local band playing in, you know, the bars and the club scene there. And um, you had Nasty Savage and those bands like that, you know. And for me, it was, you know, to outdo, you know, my competitors as far as what, you know, bringing on the... Uh, trying to be the most extreme you possibly could. But the vocals thing, man, kind of came naturally for me. I really never, I didn't think anything, there was no particular, you know, thing for me to follow back then. So I just pretty much just did what I did. And not everybody was accepting of my vocals back then. You know, a lot of girlfriends of friends would abandon the... (laughs) (laughs) 
would split out of the room. Oh my god! I like the music. I hate the vocals. I heard that a lot growing up. You know, in really? The yeah, yeah. You didn't really have a roadmap, so you kind of had to do what you wanted to do. I was say, man, back then, you know, it was like all this stuff was coming out on Metal Blade, and you had a lot of like, uh, you know, some of the earlier stuff. You had, for us, it was, you know, we had Venom and we had Possessed, and you know, Death came out of that, and you know, a lot of those bands. Those were what, you know, we were listening to back then, you know, a lot of stuff. I listened to a lot of obscure stuff. I used to go to a lot of, like, record stores, mom-and-pop shops, and dig through all the independent stuff and all the... And then I used to work for Camelot Music, I was, and I used to get all the all the metal that would come in. I just got it. They didn't play all the in-store stuff, promotional stuff, all just went right to my house. Never, oh, shit, yeah, really? So that's how I learned about a lot of, you know, different bands and stuff back then. What what were some bands uh, you you did touch upon death? But what, what were some bands that you listened to? Oh shit! Like, I kind of want to do this. You know, I, I want to, you know, scream. <laughs> I was tripping balls one night and I listened to Seven <laughs> Church or you know, Possessed, and I was like, that for me, I was like, you know, I, it all made sense. You know what I mean? So and. I say I listened to Slayer and I listened to all the stuff like everybody else did and that, but um, cause I grew up listening to classic rock and rock and roll and stuff like that. So when I started getting like hearing that, you know, the heavier stuff, yeah, the more angrier it was, the more I liked it, you know. Yeah. So that's how I was. Man. I mean, when I heard Venom and stuff like that, and I was like, wow, man, this is ugly, but I can't stop listening to it. You know? Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was you. It's crazy. How how those bands kind of like like stick with you, you know? It's nuts. Yeah, you can't shake them, man. You can't, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. And then without knowing, you just say, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna start my own band and do do this. It's like, you, you're right. You, that's the word. You just can't shake them. Yeah, like I say, when the band first got together and that, I mean, it was one of those things where um, my vocal style hadn't been established yet. I mean, but you had a couple <laughs> guys that were doing it, but I never, like I say, I just. I just yelled and screamed. I mean, some of the earlier stuff that I ever did was like a four track stuff and that. It was always, you know, that just that angry man. I call it the angry <laughs> man voice. So I have three different I have a few different ranges in that. Yeah, I got my highs and I got my mid and I have the angry man voice and then I got my low and so I can jump I jump back and forth between the, the different ranges. Wow. But uh, it all changed for me when I had my tonsils removed. I was twenty four years old and I had I had a really bad like really bad problem with my my tonsils were actually just rotting in my throat so i had them removed uh, courtesy of roadrunner they paid for it to have the procedure done and uh thanks monty two and a half weeks later i went to europe for a tour i wasn't even healed yet and i just did nothing but destroy my throat and that's why i sound the way i do today that's how i got so low and yeah, I could. Yeah, it was. There was a lot of uh, sitting in the van, going to the next gig, just sitting there in my head, just begging whoever to fuck it upstairs or downstairs, whoever, please let me give me a voice tonight to do the show. You know, really. So it was bad, man. But um, after I came back from that, I recovered and that. But my voice changed after that procedure done. Yeah. So, so you were twenty four. Had that done. Uh, what what record cycle were you on? Um, it was, uh, right after Legion. We didn't really tour for the first album that because I didn't want to, I felt that the band was worth more than a couple hundred dollars a night, you know? Uh, so we kind of just held off and let, you know, the momentum build it on its own. So after the really? second record, then the money offers came, you know, where they needed to be to make it worth everybody's while to do it. That is so opposite of how you're supposed to do it. Oh wait! Like you, like you put out a sick first record, then you waited until it built. Right. Wow. Yeah, because if you let it, I, to me it was like I've always managed the band and I've always done all, you know pretty much pushed us where we needed to be in it. But I, I didn't feel like the record companies. I mean, even then I just didn't buy the bullshit, man. You know, and mm -hmm. as much as they want to put you out there and push you and you know. If, I don't want to go into the business end of it, now, but you know, basically, they own the, they own you, they own your merchandise, and they're pretty much you know telling you you got to go do this, you know. And I just told them, no, I'll do the next record, but I'm not gonna go out and be a slave to you and sell your T-shirts. No, man, I wish more artists would would do that. Well, I think as we we don't know. Like, kind of takes someone like. Well, there's a lot of there's a level of desperation to be famous too, man. You know, it's like I remember when I was younger. It's like I always tell myself, man, if you don't get a record out by the time you're 20, you're you're done. You know, I, and that's what used to 
motivate me is, you know, to keep pushing because I just felt that you've got a better chance of becoming, you know, doing what we do. You got a better chance of success when you're younger than you are when you're older, you know. I mean, there's nothing more sadder than a 60-year-old death metal. <laughs> well, right. Well, no, but if you put out enough records and get there, I get. Yeah, might be a, a, I never thought in a million years I'd be sitting here doing this today. I never thought that I, I, for many reasons, but I just never thought that this music would be still here. And it is. It's it's amazing thing, man, to be able to come out and still do this and that, and to see other bands still doing it and everybody still pushing it. And that where there's other genres of music that have disappeared now you know and they can't even get work you know so yeah man to still be doing this you know i mean it's it's a great thing man it is you guys did it i mean and i'm curious because i mean i'm from i'm i'm from here i'm from the complete opposite of florida i know i know you were born in uh new york and then you moved to uh were, were you in tampa or were you in like the outskirts of tampa i grew up in clearwater florida okay got it. Yeah, so my parents moved there my my grandmother owned a house and she bought in the 50s and uh wow we would all go down there for vacation my you know family would vacation at the, my grandmother's house down in clearwater and we ended up moving down there in early, uh, the real early 70s and that so uh uh we lived there for quite a while and then my grandparents my mom's parents got sick and that so we moved back up to new york for a few years well my mother dealt with her parents and family and all that and then we moved back down south well, i went back up and then came oh wow i came back home yeah i couldn't wait to get the fuck out of that place i'm not a fan of it i mean i like i can say it's i have family there and that but i yeah i really don't that place doesn't hold much for me man it's if anything, it, it is another one of those things that, you know, I, I was one of the people that I turned a negative into a positive, you know, growing up, you know. And so yeah. any kind of a negative situation, I always pushed on, you know, used it to propel myself to push harder, you know, to get success. Yeah. So all the, the naysayers and you need to be a plumber and you go to school and you need to do this. And you know, it's like I, I had my own agenda, man, ever since I was a little kid. I knew what I wanted to be. I mean, I have like school, it's like papers from school. Like, what do you want to be? I wrote that shit down, man. I What I'm doing now is what I wrote down then. So I pretty much had a, from an early age, I knew what I wanted to do, man. I mean, wow. first time I heard like Little Richard and Chuck Berry and the Beatles and Stones and all that shit, I was like, man, I just, I, that's what I want to do, man. See Elvis, dude, a huge Elvis fan, you know? I mean, that's the stuff I grew up on, man. That's, the music business doesn't have, uh, you know, those those kind of celebrities anymore, those personalities anymore. It's lacking that, I think, you know, the, the personalities of the the days gone. Yeah, especially in, uh, in our chosen genre. Yeah. They have like it's what this is what you guys have, which is so rare. Like you have like the personality in in your genre. It's it's super rare because well because it's you. Well, man, you know what? We need that guy out there biting the heads off of bats. We need yeah, dude. we need Fuck we yeah, need we need these guys, man. That's that's what those are those those are the guys that made me want to do this stuff. You know, it's that crazy that 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 off the wall shit, man. That's what made me want to do this. You know how. Just, I'm curious, how old were you when you wrote that shit down? What, lyrics-wise? No, like, or, uh, like no, what, oh, uh, this is what I oh, want to do. Nine, ten years old. Nine, ten? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was that kid in the mirror with the tennis racket rocking out. Ah. <laughs> Damn. I, was, my, I had guitars in the house from an early age. My old man had guitars in the house, and I'd always sit in there, one string, one finger pan, and boom, 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 bang, boom, boom, boom. Wow. My douchebag brother would come in, you suck. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So there was a lot of humble pie to eat in my family back when I got signed. So there was a lot of people that had to eat their shit sandwiches, man. So Yeah, I mean, I mean, you lived through it. Like, you probably heard all like, oh, you should probably get a job. Or you, should, oh, or, or you heard all oh, like, I've been called. Doing? Yeah, dude, they've, I heard it all, you know. So... And, it, and that, like I say, man, that's you know, no stress. You know what I mean? You got everybody, you know, you know, you know, trying to come down on your dreams and your, you know, aspirations and that. And you just got to, like I say, man, just turn it around and use it to your advantage. Like, the more you say that, the more I'm going to do this. You know, and that's the way I was, you know. The more you wow. tell me not to do this, the more I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's like they're, it's like they're giving you, like, motivation and uh, actually make, like, making your 
picture clearer. I think they knew way. that the more they pissed me off about it, the more I was going to pursue it. So, <laughs> that's very much uh, worked, right? It's, I just, <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I learned to trade when I was early. You know, like in my uh, early like eighteen, nine, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, I started doing floor covering with a family member, and I, I learned how to do that. So I had something to fall back on. I was making money, and I had to, yeah. to do what I do, and that, so. It wasn't like I was completed here, man. I went back to school and got my GED and everything when I got older. Oh, sick. Yeah. Wow. So what was it? So now now we're talking, you know, you, you wrote that shit down when you're nine and then you now you're doing, you know, work when you're 18, 19. What what was it? What was like the Tampa, Florida death penalty scene like? coming up like from like nothing like you're just hearing about death and then it was a lot of shows like off in the middle of nowhere kind of things word of mouth shows and that you had a lot of those like parties and stuff like that where bands would you know show up and play in that and uh we had like a lot of uh local events in that where like sabotage would play morbid would play and it was it was a good time man you know early on in that i got to meet and hang out with a lot and established a lot of great friendships with a lot of those bands and that you know from back then to now you know so even even when it was coming up, I mean, there had to be like a level of like con- competition. I almost joined Morbid. I almost joined Nasty Savage, man. I, really? Yeah, those were two things I came very close to doing. And But I always felt that, that I needed to do my own thing, you know. I just never you know. fit. I, I just didn't know if I fit in another person's shoes, you know. So Yeah. And you started something completely new, right? Yeah. And then you put up a... You put, so you put up an ad on a local music paper, correct? Yeah, and then right. and then and then you got a call from the brothers. Yeah, Brian called me and was feeling me out on that. I was really only looking for a three piece. Of the, I only wanted to do a three piece band in the beginning, man. So, and uh, yeah, I, the one that impressed me the most was Steve. You know, so when I went over there and seen them playing that, it was Steve that was the one that caught my attention the most because I was looking for drummers, man. I was yeah really yeah. trying to find you know. The, that you want you you want you wanted yeah. that fucking drummer right yep so and I seen that Steve was only sixteen years old when we first oh, met him. Yeah. really yeah damn he was still in high school wow yeah I was nineteen Steve was sixteen Steve is a fascinating guy uh, Steve he's a character uh, Steve Asim 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 okay yeah that, I was like what I just said a lot Steve but do, you guys have been in a band. Or playing musically is for over thirty five years. Since July twenty first, nineteen eighty seven. And you guys haven't killed each other yet. No, how, man. How, how, you, how, you, how did you, <laughs> how, how, how do you do that, man? Uh you I can say with any kind of relationship, man, you gotta be able to, you know, take the good and the bad and ugly and all that. But mm-hmm. we all, our sense of humor is what, you know, we all have a great sense of humor about this, you know. You can't yeah. take this shit serious, man. If you take this serious, you're in the wrong business. So, oh. but like I say, man, we've Steve and I, you know, I mean, just like all friendships, you bump heads every once in a while and that, yeah. but you, you know, and with any kind of good relationship and friendship, you always work past that. You know, I mean, we're a team, man. Me and him are a writing team. We wrote just about, you know, all that stuff back in the day. So me and Steve were the, the, the force behind all that. So wow. it's kind of hard to break something like that up, you know? Totally. So I, when, we, when me and Steve write together and that, it's like almost we're thinking, you know, we can complete each other's sentences when it comes to that writing process. Yeah, you guys know each other at such a deep level, I'd imagine. Yeah, well, we know what sucks and what don't suck. And we're able to tell each other, you know, that sucks without the other person getting completely, you know, offended. And It's huge. Art, you know, artistic criticism, man. It's hard, man. A lot of people can't handle it, man. A lot of guys, in this, they're in the wrong business, man, because you tell them, hey, uh, you know, it's, that's... It kind of sucks, dude. And it's, uh, I quit, you know. Oh, God. Get out of my house. <laughs> get your gear. Yeah. Oh, my God. So it's, yeah, it's part of the process, man. You got to be able to have thick skin in this business because it's going to come at you in t- 10 different directions as far as what's going to test you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to assume, like, you get tested a lot. Get back. Still. To, to, I, still probably. I, uh, yeah. I mean, if there's one thing I'm sick of, it's bullshit. Yeah, especially older you get, dude. I mean, I'm 36 now. I'm mean, like, just like hitting 30. I'm like, dude, I'm just fucking just sick of this bullshit. I was just wasting tell- time. Yeah, man. I tell my younger son, it's like, he tells me, oh, man, dad, this, dad, that. And I'm like, dude, listen, only believe what you see, not what you hear. And that's the, that's the, this business, man. It's like, you can tell me everything under the sun, man. I'm not going to believe it until you show it to me and put it in my hands. Because uh, there's a lot of bullshit in this business. 
there is, dude. Yeah. The record companies, I mean, they're dinosaurs, man, that are, you know, they're on their last leg right now. It's a weird, weird time, man, to be in the business and that, but there's, it's going to be a few of them left standing at when the smoke clears and that, but it's just strange times, man. Strange. I mean, yeah, we, when we, you, know, you came up in a time where records were like selling. Are you, are you talking like D Slats, one of like the top selling bands on the planet playing <sighs> death metal? We got, I was just telling this story the other day. It's like me and Steve have gotten the the the, the bad end of every situation when it comes. It's like whenever we think that stuff is like, man, we're right there. It's gonna. Be, this is it, man. We're right on that. You know, the cusp of you know greatness. Something comes in and kicks our you know feet out from underneath us. And it's been like that through our career and that. So. Uh, yeah, man. It's like every time we expect, yeah, man, this is this is it. This and you know, COVID comes, or you know, the record company this or this or something happens, or somebody dies or whatever the fuck. There's always something that comes in that steals our thunder from us. So wow. we're at you know all these years of putting up with that. You know, we still just keep on just keep on swinging, man. Just it's it sounds like you guys have. I mean, is there like you, with especially with, with with you and Steve? Is this like a are you guys communicating? Are you guys actually talking about shit when shit when shit goes? Oh yeah, man, we stay in contact all the time, man. Just just like everyday conversation. I mean, I, whenever business is at hand, I always call him and we discuss it. And you know, I mean, like I say, I'm not always right. He's not always right. I'm not, you know. So we kind of find middle ground there on that for business. You know, Steve has always been there. You know, me and him has always done the business. You know, and I always, you know, like, he's like my check it, you know, run it past Steve person. You know what I'm saying? See what yeah. Steve says before I make a decision. So I always say, hey, listen, we got this, this, that, and the other. What do you think? And, you, you know, he's, his, you know, Steve's like, let's do it, you know. So there you go. I'm always the guy that goes, okay, well, this, this, and this may happen, and that may happen. And then he starts to think about it. And then I'll get a call back 30 minutes later. Hey, so he'll come up with something, you know, for me to, an angle that I may have not have caught, you know. That's great. So we work in conjunction with each other pretty well. You guys work with each other well. Uh, you have the bad conversations. Because, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just now doing that with my band. I'm, I'm talking to them. We're in a, we're in a room. This just feels like, ugh. But, but once, you ha- once you talk it out, like, there's like this, oh, like, we, we, we fixed the problem. And then, and then you move on as a, yeah. as a team. Yeah, our practices usually start off with me doing the monologue and uh, (laughs) (laughs) and news events and that. And uh, then we go, you know, we move into, you know, the smoking of weed and rehearsing and that. that. But, yeah, it usually starts with, you know, current events and stuff like that. What's going on in the world and that. We all have our little laugh there. And, I mean, we're all, like I say, man, it's more of a comedy show behind the scenes than it is. Like last night, man. I mean, Steve can. Steve, he's the king of the one-liners. So he can only say like one word, and he'll have the whole room pissing their pants laughing. Wow. That's that's Steve, you know. So that make. Do you know what that makes a lot of sense listening to your your music because uh, the drumming and you are extremely consistent throughout a thirty-two year career of of, of twelve albums. And I was like. You know, I started looking. Oh, wait, who's 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 in a band? I see you, obviously. Okay, like lead singer and bassist, and then I see the drummer. I'm like, oh, he's played on every fucking record. And I listen to drumming. Like he's, especially for this style of music, to keep up like that and still do it at a high level was it's that was one of the more fascinating things when I did uh, research on on you, the band, and and and, and your history. I'm like, damn, like the, the drumming is fucking up there. Like you, you guys, and 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 the way. It, you, you still feel and hear a connection with your music throughout all your records, and now that and you know I I, I not know I don't know I didn't know you yet so now hearing that from you it makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, well like I say, man, me and him are you know tight. Like I say, when we write, me and him get together and write. The process used to be it's like I mean I just bring it, bring it to whatever I had on the table. I bring it to practice. And me and him we just work through it, you know, together. So it's sick and make it work, you know. I mean because it's not it's I write stuff that's not always. It, what you know, it, what it should be, but I mean, I've got it in my head. I hear it the way I want to hear it, and that, and Steve can, you know, he can hear it too, you know. So there isn't much. I, it ain't like I have to go into great detail to tell him what I need, you know, or what I want for the part, because he's, you know, he's, 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 uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, improvise. He's a great improviser, man. So oh, when huge. it comes to improvising, you know, he's yeah. 
It's huge. Yeah. That's fucking sick, dude. God, Steve. Shout out Steve, dude. <laughs> fucking sick ass blast, dude. Holy fucking shit, man. Um, would you? I mean, I mean, we're we're talking late eighties to the early nineties, and you 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 have death coming up, cannibal, obituary. I have I have, I have my uh, list here, morbid angel. What are you a competitive person? Am I competitive? Yes. Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Also. Oh, I just like I say. I mean. I think I can always do better. You know, I'm one of those type of people, perfectionist, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. look at what I'm in the studio and that. I mean, I don't, it's like uh, when a certain individual wants to fix everything with the fucking Pro Tools, I'm that guy that says, you know, I can fix that in like three seconds if you just let me track it again. You know what I mean? It's like we're going to waste a half an hour in here fucking around with Pro Tools trying to fix something I can fix in three seconds, you know? Yeah. Uh, Competitive-wise, I don't know about competitive-wise. Man, there's enough there's enough on the table for everybody. You know what I mean? Back yeah. then in that, there was bands, I'm not going to name names or anything, but there was bands there that were probably a little, took it a little more serious competitively than you know, they should have and stepped on people's toes. I mean, that was mm-hmm. happening, you know, a lot, but I really didn't give a shit, man. I was too focused on doing what I'm doing to care what anybody, and when I, listen, I don't really listen, people understand, I don't listen, really listen to this kind of music. I really don't. And the reason why I don't, because I don't want it any way influencing what I write. Yeah. So I really just don't just don't listen to it, you know. So that would explain a lot if you're not l- listening to the, to those bands, and uh, that's why the side party has like the that personality. You know? I don't want to sound like anybody else, so it's like the best way to do that is not to listen to you know that those kind of music. I listen to you know like Rush and shit like that, man. You're sick, yeah. dude. So, I, really? So like you were really focused on what you were doing, and like you. Let's say like you know, Cannibal drops their fucking record in fucking night nineteen ninety or you know like or like a bitch where eighty. You're not like really paying attention to that. You're just doing what what, what you're doing. Nah, I mean I knew it because some of the guys were on the same label and that. But I knew you know I mean I obviously I'm like everybody else. I'm a troll and I you know keep up on the news and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like I said I, I just really was just I got my own pile of shit to shovel, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes a lot of sense that that's definitely like a healthy that that's definitely. I think the more healthy mind, mind I have approaching that. Yeah, I, I can say, man, I was never one for going out and hanging out in the club scene and, you know, doing that kind of thing. So I just kind of just, I'm more of a recluse sitting at home doing my own thing and yeah, keeping my thoughts, you know, for where they need to be and my mindset, you know. I mean, if I, I, yeah, I assume, obviously, we're probably similar labels and um, like, like Row Runner, et cetera, like, same scene. I, I assume like the same clubs. Like I'm, I'm. I assume you're at least hanging out with like these like more like the guys from Morbid or Cannibal. Like what? Like, what are? What were your relationships like back? I really back don't then? hang out with anybody, man. I really don't. I wow. Mean, I don't. I mean, it's. I, I occasionally may show up at something, you know. But like I said, do I know everybody? Yeah, I know everybody. Am I? I think I'm. I think I have a good relationship uh, uh, repertoire with everybody. I mean, I don't hate anybody or really give a shit about anybody to yeah you just you just want want to stay home and just do my own thing man do, you know what i mean i'm just wow. to do my thing i'm you know i you know i got my things that i do you know i, I i'm in the guns and knives and cars and motorcycles and all that bullshit and i make jewelry and stuff on the side and i i have my things that keep me busy man you know that's you. That's awesome. Now that I'm no longer, you know, dad 24-7, my kids are all grown and moved out into the world and that. So now I'm, like, rediscovering the GB of early 20s before he had kids and that. And it's kind of refreshing, man. For me, especially creativity-wise, you know, I'm able to, it's like, I'm not thinking about, what, you know, you know those obligations anymore, you know what I mean? It's like I've, I've done my job, you know? So yeah. Now it's back to being me again and focusing solely on me and what I do, you know? That's great. So I, I, I assume like the, uh, the uh, kids are all grown, grown up and now you're just. Yeah. It's like, it was kind of strange, man. When my younger son just moved out recently, you know, a couple of years ago, he moved out into the world doing his own thing. And it was just kind of weird, man. It was like, after being a dad for all these years, you know, I've got a 32 year old son and I have a, get him to be 21 year old next month. Wow. So it's, yeah, man, it's interesting, man. But yeah, they're my friends, man. My, my sons are my friends. How was it like for you, like touring full time being a dad, because that's something I'm honestly, I'm, I don't have uh, kids well, yet, but I'm fucking terrified, to be well, honest. Uh, married to divorce twice. Oh, shit. Yeah, 
Um, it's I, I don't want to blame the music business for it, but I'm saying, you know, I mean, just like any kind of job, you know, being a pilot or any kind of job where it takes you away from your family for a certain length of time and that, that's trying for any relationship, you know. So, yeah. Especially when you're in your 20s and that is really hard, man, so. My second marriage only lasted six months, so I was smart enough. Oh. I, I got, the fuck, got the fuck out of that as quick as I could. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just money, man. You know what I mean? You could buy your way out of anything. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Do you think, uh, just so, uh, so close, close, closing on, on, on the marriage part, because you know me, you know, I'm, 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 I've been dating my chick for about almost three years now. There is that worry, okay, how do I go on tour full time and really make, make this work, you know? Like, uh, is it, do you think it could have been pre- prevented somehow or like maybe there's... Um, for me? Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I, 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 you know, we all make, you know, mistakes and bad decisions in our lives and everything that we, you know, all the decisions that we do make in this world and life... Uh, can't all be winners, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just chalk it up to, you know, bad choices, bad timing and, you know, things bad like timing. that. But, yeah. you know, it's like when you have a, and I learned, you know, later in life that when it comes to relationships and that, the, the relationship, you need to establish the friendship first, you know. And once you establish that and you have that trust, you know what I mean? I think you can, I, I go on tour now, man, I have no care in the world. I don't have to worry anymore because the person I'm with, I can trust fully and completely. I have no worries or anything like that. Yeah. You know, she conducts herself like a lady, and I appreciate that. Yeah. A lot of trust there. Yeah, it's so it's so nice doing your own thing and with that trust. Is it, there's you're a, not having that worry all the time mind, in the back of your head, man. It's yeah, like I'm always having to tell my younger son, "It's like, dude, stop, man, stop. Just you don't want to put on the same pair of lead shoes, man. Just kick tires, man. Gene Simmons, man, kick tires, kick tires. Till you're later in life, then think about getting married and do something like that. You know, have fun, man. Enjoy your younger years. You know. Yeah, I got married young, man. I didn't. Maybe I missed out. Maybe there was some of that where I felt like I was missing out on things and that. Maybe there was a little bit of that in there mixed in there with that. But all kids, man. I think you should really. I think there should be a law, man. You know, like when it comes to marriage licenses, it should be like a driver's license where you get to renew it every couple of years and they, you go in and they ask you a couple of questions and it's like, are you happy? No. Uh, you want out of this? Absolutely. And then they stomp it and show you the door and you're free. You know, but. Unfortunately, it's like a contract, just like a music, you know, a recording contract. It's all wow. contractual law. Wow. It is, unfortunately. And you know when, okay, this this, this relationship is now over. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and we tried. When you get the lawyer's retainer bill. It's <laughs> oh, my goodness, dude. Like, Holy shit, man. Yeah, it's a, I, I was talking about this the other day about that, you know, when you're in a situation like that, the hopelessness that comes with that, you know, it's like being in a situation like that. I don't ever want to be in that place. I've, I've, I've been successfully engaged for 15 years, so I'm not going to just disturb that by going really putting paperwork in in it yeah so i've been with yeah so we've been together for 15 years never a breakup never a bad word never a nothing man so wow yeah congrats did you do you uh yeah i guess in a weird way like a marriage would maybe she's my handler man she knows how to handle me man like a lot of people that you know she's what she does for a living and that makes her more apt to that but she knows how to deal with me and that. She's read all of Sharon Osbourne's books and that, so she's well. <laughs> she's got, she's kind of got an idea how to handle people like me. You know? Yeah, I do feel sorry for uh, like the females or, or women involved because w- creatives were, were just a little, little bit more. I feel like right. you know, and it has, you got to be a pretty strong minded to, uh, to kind of handle any kind of. You got to uh, be sec- you know secure with yourself. You know, yeah. you, you know, it's it's. It's horrible when you're in a relationship with somebody who's not secure with themselves, you know, because it just makes you miserable. You know? That's true. And it's probably for, for both sides. I break out the checklist. Oh, she said something fucked up, check. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Where she, oh, she, you know, she just, I have a checklist, you know, and I just kind of after, you know, multiple relationships and marriages and stuff like that, you just kind of like, you, you set a standard for yourself. You're like, I'm not yeah, going to compromise anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, I, it's what I want, what I need, or nothing at all, you know? Yeah, true. Shit, dude. Well, I mean, so relating that to to the bands, like what what was kind of like the last straw for like for like like, like, like the brothers? Because you've been in a band for, that was 2004, so 14... You're talking 16 they've years? They've been out almost 20 years now. It'll be next year. It'll be 20 years since they've been out. Man. Really? Yeah. It was, listen, man, it was all business. 
you know. Um, the way they conducted themselves uh, uh, was unprofessional and brought mm-hmm. a black eye to, you know, me and Steve, which we didn't deserve it because we were doing all the work. Yeah. Um, our record deal, when we were, we signed that deal with Roadrunner, we were kids, you know, so we signed it all collectively, you know, not knowing anything about, you know, writer shares yeah, or dude. any of that shit, you know. We didn't know any of that Fuck. stuff back then. So when we went to Earache, you know, everybody was, you know, everybody was brought on board, notified that, listen, the deal's changing, you get paid for what you write. And uh, they uh, got their first checks because they didn't barely write anything for Scars. I mean, they were but one or two songs each, I think. And they got their publishing checks, and they immediately quit the band. Wow, just like that. And I was ready to quit anyway. I was doing vital, and I was I was just had a, had enough of their bullshit. So I was ready to go. So when they quit the band, it was, they did me a favor, you know. Damn. So you almost left. I was ready to go. Yeah, I had enough of their shit. Yeah, I couldn't handle the the unprofessionalism and the the just their yeah man just couldn't take it anymore man. So I was traveling by myself and yeah. Damn. Yeah. It's crazy how a member or two will make you want to quit your own band. Oh yeah, it's so fucking. Yeah, yeah. Nuts, and then dude. they wanted to fucking burn that, burn it down when they left too. <laughs> they wanted to burn the fucking thing to the ground. It's like uh, all my hard, me and Steve's hard work. They wanted to burn it down to the ground. So unfortunate. And all that, you know what, man? It's it's as simple as this. Until it's still to this day, he's still fucking making idiotic posts and shit. And uh, it's it's embarrassing. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it really is. It's like you know, it, it's you've been out of the band for twenty years, man. You know what? Go do something with yourself. You know what I mean? Leave yeah. me the fuck alone. You know? Yeah, it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier with having thick skin. You know, we all kind of learn it the hard way right. being in like the, in the industry that, that, that we're in. Uh, I had a, a great advice from his name is Taylor Young. He plays uh, guitar in uh, uh, like God's Hate. Like he's a sick producer and mixer, like top notch. And he gave me the best advice I got. This was very recent. He's like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I, was, I was like, I don't know why, but that he's a very simple and his he's so precise with his words that they, that just hit me hard. Well, how I live, man, I, it's some, I have something uh, very similar to that. How I live, and that is, I don't waste my thoughts on people and things like that. You know, I just don't waste. They're not worth my thoughts. I don't think about them. I don't give them. You know, I just really don't just waste my energy and on people and things like that. It's like it's, it's a downer for life. You know, what I mean, it's like who wants. I don't live in the past, man, and I don't swim up shit river twice, you know, <laughs> and I don't walk upstairs backwards. That's how it is. Well, so, Glenn, like I say, man, when it came to them, like I say, it's like I wish them all the best in that, and yeah. I wish they would uh, move on in that. Um, they do still, you know, reach out, trying to, you know, get back into the band, and that's never going to happen. So the sooner they realize that, the sooner they can probably have, enjoy the rest of their lives, maybe. Yeah, man, it's, I mean, it's, do you decide it's you and you and Steve, dude? And I know I know that feeling where like a band member or two just fucking ruin it, dude. Dude, all you gotta do is sit in the back seat and fucking look out the window, man. Just enjoy the fucking ride. That's all you had to do. Nothing more. A lot of people yeah. can't do that. It's, and you know what? Here's the fucked up thing, man. You know, there's two words. Two words can fix a lot of fucking things. And they've never used those two words to me and Steve ever. And uh, I don't think they ever will, and I'm never gonna ask them for it. Got it. You know. Very very uh very clear um our our late singer mitch um he was by far the most stubborn person i ever met in my fucking life stubborn as shit right but i mean i, I, mean, I know I, exactly what you're talking about I, huh? I i love him so much but like you know we'll have some arguments on the road but he's so hard-headed and so but he could go we could we could step aside you know, we don't know where in fucking europe or france and it's step aside i'm sorry man I mean, you know I said, I'm, I'm sorry too so right. so he's always the past like ten years, he's always been a standard. If he can say sorry, anyone can say sorry. Anyone. You know what? And that's my 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 younger son. He recently was telling me that he was giving somebody a lecture, and uh, and he's like, "Dad, you know, it's like the fact that you, whenever you were wrong, you always apologized, and that's how you teach your children not to be sociopaths." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. I can say. These individuals, I feel that there's a lot of that there. You know, it's like because some people just don't know how to apologize for their behavior and their actions. They mm-hmm. don't care, or they just, you know, like I say, man, they, they maybe they feel that there's been so much damage done that something as simple as an apology might fix things. But they're, if, I mean, they're that fucking stupid, you know. So, like I say, I've, I haven't seen them in almost twenty years, or spoke to either one of them, and I don't wow. plan on it. So those two words go a long way, man. Yeah. Well, like I say, man, uh, you know, it's not just me. I mean, there's, 
you know, things said to Steve too. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that I say, man, there's things that you just can't come back from. Stop. You know what I mean? Yep. You know that you say that. You know when you're saying it, and you know when you're doing it that there's no mm -hmm. coming back from it. That you've you've permanently stepped over that line forever. For sure. Yeah. I get it, man. One of the hardest things I've ever done for my band is look them in the face and say, "I'm sorry for for this, sorry for that," yeah, and then and then you go home and you this this. You're brought to your knees, being humble. You feel like shit for a second because, like, you're just like, "Oh, shit, I was but wrong." But you, you feel like you did something for the greater good, though. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about, man. I mean, you can't go through life, man. It's just hurting people and stepping on toes and burning bridges and that. Yeah. I mean, because it's all going to come back to you eventually, you know. And yeah, you reap what you 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 sow, man. You know? Totally. Uh, I was looking at your most recent uh, three records, and you went to Century Media. Whose idea was it to go to Mark Lewis and and then after Mark Lewis, uh, Jason? That was me. Steve Cobb was you. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm not a fan. I mean, like I say, I, not that I have anything against Mark or anything like that. He's a great producer, and that I just didn't. Yeah. You know, like I say, you, there's a chemistry with people oh, you know, when you work with that, and I just me and Jay get along great. You know. Yeah. And uh, Jay knows how I like to work in the studio and stuff like that. So, like I said, we just get a better, you know, better repertoire there, and that nothing against Mark. Like I, say, I just like working with Jason better. Yeah, it makes it makes a lot. A lot, lot, lot of sense. And He's I, a I character love, too. Like you say, man, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's, awesome. it's right. It comes right back to the, the humor and the comedy and the whole, you know, because Jay mm -hmm. likes to laugh as much as we do, you know. Yeah. So I like to be around people that that laugh and, and enjoy life, man. You know and that. I mean, like I say, if you take this too serious, man, it's not going to be any fun anymore. No. But I like people that you know keep me laughing and that I can be myself and say off the wall shit too, and you know. Yeah. There's a lot of trust involved when when someone's doing your record, right? You know, of and uh, there's something about the music that when you trust everyone in the room, something happens. It's like it's like that fucking magic sauce. Yeah, you know, it's just like oh, but yeah, then you're, yeah, you're making magic, man. You know it when you're hitting it. You're in the you're in the yeah. pocket. You're in the zone, man. You know it. Yeah, yeah. it's great. I, I mean, I think that was, that, that was a great choice. And also, what I, I love about the past two records was. Obviously, you guys came from like the, like the late '80s, early '90s, but yet you're still open-minded enough to go. Oh, wait, let's try like a new, more. Let's let's do us, but use a more like like some some modern tools. Yeah, and, I, and it worked. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 as far as the way, the way we approach the writing and that, I tell everybody, it's like, I mean, we want to focus. I mean, it's, we, we can't get away from what we you know we do, what we are and what we do in that. It, but it's like uh, try to give me. Um, I, I, I used to say this about the other ones. I, I'm not Rumpelstiltskin. I can't spin that pile of shit in the gold. Okay. <laughs> so if you hand me a pile of shit, I, I you know I can only do what I can with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if you hand me something that's catchy and hooky and ri you know yeah. it's got that hook, yeah, man, I'll give you I'll I'll give you something great every time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, yeah, the past two records for sure. Like uh, my my favorite is. Uh, in the minds of evil, like there's a lot more hooks in that shit. Yeah, Kevy wrote a lot of those songs on that album. That's sick, dude. Yeah. And I, I mean, and then again, like you, you, you didn't get a pile of shit. So it's right. it's, it's, you, you, and it's you, like you did a lot I, with those. I mean, songs have to be like anthems. You know what I mean? They have to have a personality that for make them stand out. You know, because if not, it's just going to be one dimensional. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm not a fan of that. I like to have, you know, where I can get creative with it. You know, yeah, and do you know different kinds of. Uh, uh, building of the lyrics and you know creating you know that catch and those hooks and for the vocals too you know what I mean it goes you know the vocal you got it, it's all got a hook man it's all got a you know totally dude you know, it can't just be the music hook and the, the, the vocals suck you know it's it's got to have you know like a, like a story like you're creating something like a you know an illusion almost like you're creating this yeah whatever you want to call it yeah on you it's it's a, it's, totally. a, it's it's the weed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it, but but but, but yeah. I mean, in the, people don't realize when you listen to this kind of music, like uh, you guys or us, like there's purposeful hooks in there, right? W like homage for Satan, stuff like that. I mean, those songs stand out because of the hooks, you know. So even a after twelve records, you still get like inspired. Oh yeah, man. The new stuff that we're writing now is really anthem style stuff, and that it's really good, man. There's a lot of prog stuff in there mixed in oh, there. Oh wow. And that, yeah. Well, there... Steve's our prog guy, man. Steve's the progressive rock guy. He's, yeah, he likes to write those really like black metal riffs and the 
progressive stuff. Sick. Well, he doesn't have the plant style for it. Yeah, dude. He's he's an amazing talent, man. He plays piano. He can play sweeps on guitar. I mean, what a fucking he's a freak. drummer. Yeah, dude. He, he can do it all. Wow. Yeah. It may, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you guys, you guys has been, I mean, obviously your last record was 2018. So looking at four years, it looked like it might it might be time for a little, a little something, something. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're just getting ready to hammer this deal out right now and get this thing out. So that's sick, man. The cool. whole Legion Congrats. thing was kind of thrown at me at the last, you know, because we had the record written last year when this was thrown at me and that. And I can say I have always been the one like, you know, fuck doing Legion, fuck doing, you know, it's like I never, I'm never going to do that, you know, revisit shit like that because yeah. I see a lot of bands do it. And, and then we started doing it and it was like actually kind of fun, man. So I was really? like, yeah, it's kind of like, wow, this is, I thought it was going to be like pulling teeth, but it was actually really easy in that. Once we got Taylor in the band, you know, playing guitar and that, and it's like we finally have a guitar player that is, yeah, that's all the way around, you know what I mean? Perfect for the band. Great. So no hang-ups, no issues with booze, drugs, <laughs> any shit, man. You know what I mean? Everybody knows what we've been through with guitar players and that. So yeah. now we finally got, like I say, Kevin's solid, man. Kevin is a solid. He's been with us. That's why Kevin will always be with us. Taylor, like I say, came aboard, man, uh, after we had to let Canelo go. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, Taylor's just, like I say, the whole Legion thing came, really came together quick when Taylor joined the band. Wow. Yeah, he's an amazing guitar player, man. The kid is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's good to bring in like new energy. It probably just yeah, and you know what? It made so it made all of us stand, you know, step it up, you know, because maybe you know when you got a slopper in the band, it makes it real easy for you to be a slopper too, you know. So totally, dude. and when you have somebody that's there and they're focused and they're hitting all that shit on the nail, you know, them nails on the heads and that, it kind of makes you have to do the same thing. So it all made it made us step all of our games up. You know? Absolutely, man. We just got a new drummer, and he's like way on it. So I'm like, oh, oh I, yeah. I, so I, now you, yeah. He starts telling you, pointing shit out to you, telling you you're playing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, it's good. It's, 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 it's good for us. We need. We, yeah. I think we all need a push in our lives. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we need fr- some new blood, man. You know what I mean? It's like the whole guitarist thing, man. Ugh, I'm just so. I'm at a point now where it's like, I'm for the first time in the history of this band, I'm content with the guitar players in the band. Absolutely, one hundred percent content. Congrats, man! Yeah, Sick. It is, it's, man. I have no worries anymore. I can go do my. I don't have to worry about this individual embarrassing us in public, or this person embarrassing us on stage, or this person embarrassing us in his private life. You know what I mean? I, yeah. And it's just a total pro situation now, and that's the way you know. It's great, man. Yeah. That's sick. Well, I mean, you you've had a a full on career, and and you're still going, and uh, time has passed with when, when when my band came out. I was just curious on your opinion on the uh, like, what do you think about the deathcore scene and bands? Um, some of it, I, like I say, man, I really don't listen to much of it to be able to give you a a hundred percent honest opinion about it. I mean, yeah. some of it I like, some of it I, I it sounds, you know, the same can be said about me. It sounds all the same in that. I mean, sure. I like stuff that's like I say, I like music that. Uh, you know, you put some effort into it besides just a. Of course. Bah, 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 of course. That, I like a little, you know, like some change it up. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Because I grew up listening to that older stuff. You know what I mean? And that's how that music was structured back in the day. You know, I mean, the music that we do is the closest thing to classical music, the way it's written and structured, sure. than any other music form. Yeah. So when you think about the way it's structured and you know, musically, it's. I mean, grunge isn't that, and, you know, some of the newer musics and that is, like, everything is so computer-generated now, man. And it's like, oh, yeah, it I is. just put my studio together and that, so I'm, I'm uh, been working with Pro Tools and that for all these years, and that I figured might as well get it, put it in the house so I can play with it there, too, so. There you been, go. Yeah, I've been... To, you know, messing around with that and that right. stuff. It's I needed a, I needed an outlet, man, to be able to write my stuff. You know, because yeah, you know, filming it on my phone and then taking it to, you know, this way, man. I throw my modern drummer program on. I pick a beat, do, 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 I put it all in there, and I can you know I can notebook what I need to notebook and bring it to practice in a more professional manner. Oh wow! That and if I'm working with Jay, I can just you know I can record my stuff at the house and just fire it over to him via email. Damn, that's sick. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get with the times, man. Yeah, I, uh, I think uh, we we we're, we're doing that very similar thing. Where like you want to you want still do your own thing, 
but you want to keep the times, but you also want to, yeah, you want to maintain you, but you want to, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird. <laughs> it's, it's like you can, uh, I'm used to going in a, re- a recording studio and there's so much outboard gear and so much stuff. And now it's just been reduced to this little laptop and this little mm-hmm. hard drive. And that's your studio now. And there's people making records like that. Yeah. And it's, I feared, man, I, I better get in on a game now before I get too old, man. You know, yeah. so I'm gonna learn it all on that. So, yeah, I'm, I've been, I've come a pretty good way. I got a lot of good teachers, man, teaching me along the way. Great. So, but I always tell them, it's like if this is gonna make me crazy, you know, doing the whole studio thing, because some of the studio guys are a little wacky and shit. So I was like, if I start getting wacky like that, I'm putting the shit to the side, man. You're gonna get even more wacky, dude. Oh, you better be careful. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I nitpick the shit out of everything, man. I don't. Dude, so wait, you're going into, in, into Pro Tools? That's what? that that that's pretty hard. What learning Pro Tools? Yeah. Um, for me, that was fucking hard, dude. I picked it up pretty quick, man. Really? I mean, oh yeah, shit! I mean, okay. I, I went through the GarageBand program in like 30 minutes and figured that thing out and that. And uh, but no, man, everything's all drop and drag now with Pro Tools and that. It's like you oh, can wow. just grab it off your desktop, dump, dump it in, the file creates itself, and. Oh damn! Like I say, I mean, it's, I mean, you, I mean, you got to know how to EQ and certain stuff like the simple basic stuff and that, you know. But yeah, yeah, hey, man, you know what we got today that we didn't have when I was a kid? It's called YouTube. So you need to learn how to trim your toenails. You go to YouTube. Oh my goodness! You want to learn how to run Pro Tools? You go to YouTube. You know, I mean, it's all there, man. You know, we wanted to work on a car when I was a kid. You had to go to the auto parts store and buy a Chilton's book and sit there and throw them through that thing all day long. Now you just go on YouTube and there's 30 dudes showing you how to fix your car, you know? Oh, my goodness. So it's like we live in a different age now, man, you know, then. Yeah, since, uh, you know, we didn't have YouTube back in the day, you you definitely didn't. Like, what, you know, how, how did you start playing the bass? I mean, you're going like, because you're going from your bass playing to like, a death metal band. I played guitar first. I played rhythm okay. guitar first. And okay, a couple, cool. You know, you know, when I was a kid playing in bands and I played guitar first. We had a shortage of bass players. There wasn't really very many bass players around, so I just one day just picked it up and started playing bass. So, damn. I just I kind of like it, you know. Would you Would you consider yourself a more of a rhythm player? Yeah, I'm more of a rhythm player than that. Wow. So yeah, you, when I'm at home, I write everything like rhythm wise on the my guitar and it. I wrote Dead by Dawn on an acoustic. I write, I write a lot of songs on acoustic, man. I don't know, because I'm really? just sitting there watching the Beverly Hillbillies just playing, picking on my guitar and shit, you know? <laughs> shit comes to you at the strangest times, you know, so. Do you, you know, I, I've been hearing a lot about that. Like, people that, that will play on an on acoustic, they'll, they'll watch, like, a movie or something. They'll be watching, like, like Breaking Bad or something. You're just watching, and, like, you know, a riff that's come out. Yeah, it's Sukoff crazy. is always like, dude... There's one song on the last record that he kept swearing to me that it was uh, the Puppet Master theme song, you know, from the movie Puppet Master. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that's, I don't know where you're getting that from, but maybe it remotely had a similar sound to that. But like, uh, yeah, Sukoff picked up on that. And it wasn't from the TV because I haven't seen that movie since I was a kid and that, but it was similar to it, maybe a little bit in that. But um, yeah, man, he's, he's a, he's an encyclopedia, man. You can't get none past the guy. You yeah, know? dude. So if you got something that's similar to anything on this planet, he's going to be like, hey, that sounds like this. That's awesome. And it's good to have that set of ears, man. You know, Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jason's been in the game for a while. He actually recorded one of my favorite death metal records of all time. So uh, that was in like late, in late 90s. Uh, that's uh, Eternal Suffering, Dr- a Drowning right. in, in, in Tragedy. I fucking... That was, that's a big influence on us. Jay's an amazing guitar player too, man. I hear, I hear. Yeah, about Jay that, yeah. helps us out sometimes, you know, with the, you know, the structuring of the leads and stuff on the records and that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a fucking a, ripper, huh? He's an amazing guitar player. Man. Yes, sometimes he'll like uh, FaceTime our our the guitar player Mark, and he's out of his mind. You know? He'll be like, "Dear, listen, I'm <laughs> <laughs> he's like, just blow your mind, man." Wow. Yeah, he writes some pretty crazy shit, man, and he just does it like, like. Most people, you know, put their shoes on. That's how he just, so. like, effortless. Damn. Yeah, I like those guitar players that play with their soul and their effort, you know, that effortless playing, like, you know, Eddie Van Halen and Clapton, all them, those greats, you know. It's like, it doesn't even look like they're even putting anything into it. It just comes by, you know. Yeah. It's just Damn. natural. Yeah. Yeah, you said you said the key word, which I always tell a lot of people: soul. You got to put, yeah, you got to put the soul into it. Man. I can pick a guitar player out, you know. Like I say, I can tell if you're playing, you know, from your soul, or if you're playing, you know, from the Mel Bay guitar book, 
like Doug Aldridge, man. I I, I love Doug Aldridge. He's good guitar playing, man. I, I yeah. think he's a great guitar player. That Dio album he did with Dio, or you know, yeah, uh, uh, Killer Dragon. I think it was a great album. Man. Nice. Well, I don't want to keep you for too long. I have one cool. more question for you. All right. Um, what what's like the key to your longevity after highs and lows and, and you're still here doing it <sighs> revenge <laughs> revenge yeah yeah success <laughs> is the best revenge true it really is yeah how do you get yeah nothing nothing uh <laughs> <laughs> i didn't expect that at all it, it's the truth though man i mean i do this because i just love rubbing the salt in the wounds and that's what keeps me going could be from either what family or, or bands or maybe everybody, like, everybody. All of, every motherfucker i can't stand on this fucking planet man is what keeps me going yeah there's a lot of them man yeah but yeah it's like uh it's like they're all sitting on the edge of their fucking seats waiting for me to go i quit or i retire or you know they're waiting for that you know and it's that's what's keeping me going because i'm not going to give them that satisfaction when i go it'll be on my terms wow yeah Glenn, thank you for that. That yeah. was that was really inspiring. Damn, it, it is true, huh? It's the best, man. Like I say, I tell my son all the time. He just broke up with his girlfriend. And he's like all beat up over it and shit. And I said, dude, go out and find another chick with big, you know, <laughs> and just it's all just one upper, man. You know what I mean? Life is all about one up, and you know it's all it is. <laughs> so you want to get her, you know, get revenge? You go, you know, just one up it. It's, that That's is, it. there is a lot of truth to that, man. It's true. I, I get a lot of satisfaction out of knowing that there's, I'm still stinging the shit out of people, man. Fuck yeah, dude. Mm. That is what's up, dude. Well, to uh, to wrap this up, Glenn, uh, where can people find you if you even want people to find you? Uh, you find us on the DSI official uh, Facebook page, on the uh, DSI official Instagram page. I'm on there too. And um, yeah, we're Sick. out there. You're out there and you're uh, you're on tour right now, dude. Yes. You're at the uh, observatory tomorrow. You're in LA. You got Sacramento, Portland, oh, yeah. Seattle, the Chicago. weed states. Uh, and your last show is in Tampa, Florida, on uh, yeah. s- September 10th. Is this is this the new venue? Yeah, the Orpheum moved out of Ybor it, City. It's over there. It moved, by right? the, it's over by the new uh, Brass Mug over there on Paris Avenue over in North Tampa. Have, have you seen it? I haven't been there yet, no. But I heard, I, I've heard it's really it's going to be... Really? Yeah, it's going to be uh, the end of the brass mug from what I was told. Wow. Yeah. Because that one, that I, I, we were just there, and it, what, I think we put the, like, the last show there. Where Oh, at the, last, at the Orpheum and Ebor? Yeah. 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 That's, that's a weird gig, man. You know, going into Ebor and that. It's, yeah. It used to be a happening place, man. Now really? It's, yeah, it's kind of like lost its luster, I guess, over the years. It happens, huh? Yeah, I, I like I say, man, we've been playing shows in Ebor, you know, for our whole career and that. So that used to be the place, you know, that's where you went. Damn. You know, the Ritz Theater, Masquerade, and then the Orpheum and uh, Crowbar, Cuban Club, all them places, man. Those were all the metal spots, man, back in the day. Dang, that's fucking crazy. Well, it's good. To, uh, well, sometimes you just gotta change, right? No, yeah, man, we all can't. You know, you gotta change your underwears eventually. <laughs> oh my <right>? goodness. <laughs> Well, that's a great closer. Uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn, Thanks for having me, man. Honor, man. All right, everyone, till next time. Later. Right on.